My name is Ty. Welcome to The Bitter Bartender. Spent a lot of time behind the bar and even more time in front of the bar. Today, I'm actually going to be talking about something a little different today. We're going to be talking about scotch. Deanston scotch. Uh, this is actually a little different because typically you'll find a lot of scotches are made in sherry casks or old bourbon casks. This uses a virgin oak cask, which is what bourbon is made with, with unused oak casks. So it gives it a very distinctive flavor. Uh, this is a Speyside Scotch. Uh, Speyside is one of the many regions in Scotland uh, that have different characteristics depending on what region you have, are, are getting the Scotch from. Speyside, Highlands, Lowlands, Island, Elay. Uh, there's a couple different ones. Uh, but for the most part, this was a gift, uh, which is why I have these really cool Deanston rocks glasses. Um, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's not typically what I go for. I usually go for an Elay Scotch myself, but this was actually very nice. It's it's not over uh, flavorful. It's it's not something that's gonna punch you in the face, but it's something that's actually has characteristic, but also very mellow. Now uh, let's give this a little taste of roux. So it definitely has that malty, caramelly, toffee-ish nose to it. Slightly salty. Oh, but it has a really high uh, like a spice finish to it, like a cinnamon nutmeg. It's very good. Uh, the drink we're going to be making today is called a rusty nail. Now, typically, what you would be using is a scotch with drambuie, but like I showed in my previous video, I've actually made my own version of alternate drambuie myself. So we're going to be making two cocktails. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and get started on that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build right in the glass, and so we're going to do one and a half ounces of scotch and we're going to put in three quarter ounce of the drambuie okay then we'll put that to the side and start our second cocktail of, again, one and a half ounces of scotch. Three quarter ounce of the alternate drink buoy. Oops, I always have trouble with that one. <laughs> there we go. That stuff is very strong smelling. Good in a good way, but it's very strong smelling. All right, definitely have two different colors going on there. Uh, could be because this is actually refined. This is something I did myself. We're gonna use some spherical ice cubes. Just kind of incorporate the flavors. What really makes me excited about this garnish is that I actually get to use Luxardo Maraschino cherries. Uh, they're delicious. <laughs> they're not like your neon red uh, maraschino cherries that you're going to find at almost any bar, really. But these are actually what those are based off of. So these are, sorry, they're a little hard to get on the little skewer there. There we go. So, they're definitely very dark, very syrupy. Uh, they're not as, I would say, candied flavor, overly sweet, because they're not just made with cherries, they use maraschino liqueur. Now, maraschino liqueur 
is a Italian liqueur that's pretty much the founding of all these kind of maraschino kind of derivatives. Uh, this uh, you could actually say this is probably the the first, um, if not the most famous. And it's my preference. I don't get me wrong. If I'm making a Shirley Temple for some kid, I'm definitely going to use those neon red cherries. But if I'm going to make some an old fashioned or a rusty nail, I'm going to be using these. They're just a superior quality, better flavor. And uh, don't judge me. Delicious. <laughs> All right, so this is the one made with actual drambuie. We're just gonna incorporate a little bit of that flavor from the maraschino cherry juice. I am saying maraschino and not maraschino because uh, maraschino is Italian. It's an Italian word. And in Italian, or mostly any romantic language, S-C-H, is a sk sound. In English, which is a Germanic language, it's a sh sound. So this being an Italian product, it's maraschino. If you're using the other stuff, it's an American kind of concept. Maraschino is fine, but I'm gonna be a little snooty about this. <laughs> this is maraschino. Uh, This definitely has that sweet overtone. So it's it's a very evolving flavor. And that licorice really just, it's fennel seed is what it is. Which is essentially where that flavor profile reigns, is that licorice flavor everyone associates. So that fennel seed really kind of dive bombs in halfway. Uh, but at first you get that, that sweet mixing with that scotch kind of saltiness. The, those caramel flavors. And that, it, it's strange, after that first sip, it, it's not, that fennel seed isn't there. And then it's footage afterwards. Uh, and now we're gonna try the one that I made. And I go ahead and incorporate a little bit of that flavor in there. So first off, <laughs> that is a way different smell. Uh, it is spice heavy. Uh, as I said in my last video, I used mulling spices as kind of a substitute for those fennel seeds. So that's, that's mixing very strongly. I mean, it's made with scotch already. So putting it in scotch really just kind of ramps up the already existing uh, scents and flavors. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, so uh, it definitely, it, it still has a little bit of that coffee, toff, not coffee, sorry, toffee, uh, caramel kind of flavor to it. But it's, it's definitely overridden by a lot of the spiciness that is kind of a finish in that scotch, but definitely a mainly front stage and present flavor in this. And I mean, it's delicious. Uh, so thank you for watching my episode. And as always, Let's get drunk. <laughs>